welcome inside the Classic Hamilton's Control Center for Ladder 2 of our championship series here um, from downtown Amesbury along with Mark Ritchie. My name is Kyle Bruce and uh, Mark, we had a, a brand new uh, series of roll-offs to determine the top five bowlers for this ladder and uh, we have, um, we'll take a look at the graphic here for uh, the five contestants that will be competing in this ladder and uh, we see a smaller disparity uh, compared to, as in terms of the amount of pins that separate bowlers one through five. Uh, looks like uh, from number one we have Nick Zuffalato with 664 and then uh, the original Chuck D, Chuck DeRocher is our uh, five seed who will be featured on this show uh, today finishing with 604. Um, why do you think this time around that the, the scores ended up being the way they were compared to the first ladder? I don't know. That's kind of a loaded question. Um, th things vary in the bowling alley, as you know, from time to time, and we never throw the same scores we threw the last time. But this roll-off seemed a lot more competitive. There was a lot more fire in the roll-off. Um, I was there. I qualified. So um, the feeling amongst the guys was that there was a, a, a much more, what's the right way to put it, a, a more heightened sense of urgency to get on the show because there was a lot of talent in the room that day that we had the finals and as you could tell it took 600 to get on the show this year this particular ladder you had to average 120 and we had a couple big scores and we had a couple guys who at the very last second got in in the last box uh, if i remember right chucky had a 70 half on the back half of his fifth game to qualify and get in so there was a lot of good bowling and it did, really should make for a hell of a ladder interesting uh, to me that uh, with this particular ladder that we see uh, basically a bunch of young guys and we have uh, our fourth seed uh, who's been a veteran around a long time, Peter Pereira. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, Peter and uh, going against Chuck today, our fifth seed? Yeah, Peter is uh, definitely a grizzled veteran of the Candlepin Wars. Um, he's been around for a long time. Um, he's bold. He's been one of the best for years. Uh, he took a hiatus. He went into the Navy for, I believe it was 14 years. Um, so in, even as he came back, he got himself right back into the game very quickly. Um, he bowls in the pro leagues. He bowls in all the pro tournaments that we go to and such. And he came up and had himself a day, qualified for TV for the first time in many, many years. There's video of him bowling from years ago, but uh, now there's going to be some new video of him bowling this week. You know, the interesting thing to me that you pointed out is that, you know, he uh, was on television uh, years ago, and he looked to me uh, then and now like he throws the exact same ball. He really does. I mean, you can go back and see. I believe it said the last time he was on TV was 1994, and it's now 2014. It's 20 years later, mixing 14 years in the Navy, and the man still throws the same ball. Nice and hard, nice and straight, right down the middle. It's very rare to see him miss the head pin. Um, he has a really, really good spare ball. I've seen him cut some shots over that would make the rest of us just stand on our heads. So it's, um, it's good to see him back. It's good to see him scoring well. And uh, congratulations, he made the show. It'll be a fun match to watch. I hope he does well. Uh, what can you tell our viewers about Chuck DeRocher, who was our fifth seed? Uh, looks like he finished with a 604 for this roll off. Chucky D. Um, another young kid. Uh, he's from Haverhill. He's been making a lot of noise the last couple of years. Um, he seems to have found a really good spare ball and a good rhythm for himself lately. He's made a lot of progress in the last couple of years, getting his whole game together, mental and the actual physical game of bowling the ball. The mental game is that unspoken part that you really can't teach somebody. They have to learn it. And Chuck has, has gone light years in the last couple of years as far as getting everything together. And it's really starting to show. He's starting to bowl a lot better. I bowl with him in our leagues on Tuesday nights. And he's been getting better and better by the week. So congratulations to him, too, for making the show. It's good to see him up here on the TV show. Excellent. It should be a great match. And our fifth seed, uh, Chuck DeRocher, the original Chuck D, facing our fourth seed, Peter Pereira. And we'll be back uh, at the Classic Candle Pins Control Center after this first-round match. We'll see you then. Hi, everybody. We're back from downtown Amesbury, Massachusetts, on Classic Candle Pins. Uh, speaking for the entire crew and my partner Rich Lamoni, my name is Kyle Bruce and we're here to start our second ladder championship of the season. Our first uh, one, Rich, was uh, culminated in the, uh, the victory for Jonathan Boudreau and we have five new bowlers this time around. 
Um, if you could just uh, give our viewers a, a peek on what we're looking at uh, with Peter Pereira and, uh, and Chuck DeRocha this time around. These guys are two of the most explosive bowlers on tour. You know, if they start hitting the head pin, the pins just fly into the deck. They're gone. So it should be an exciting match, and I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it, too. We'll be right underway with uh, Chuck DeRocha throwing our first ball right after this timeout. Chuck DeRocha will get us started off here in the first string of our first round matchup on Classic Candle Pins. Glad to have you along. Chuck finished with a 604 to make Rico Baldinelli an alternate yet again. I actually bowled the entry tournament to get to the sem to the finals with Chucky. He bowled very well. Nice out to make that a nine. Moving over to lane seven here. Lane six. Lane six. <laughs> How am I looking? It's on the Light head pin. pin. Leaves the three seven ten. Seemed like a better ball than what his result was. Almost the conversion that time as the wood went off the deck before it could reach the seven pin. And a pair of nines to begin for Chuck. And that'll bring up Peter Pereira. Peter from Tewksbury, Mass, a veteran of the of candle pin combat. And I think he throws the same ball that he threw years ago as he has the one and two to begin here on lane seven. Yeah, I got the lane right this time. And nice he has shot. His our first match of the contest, our first mark of the contest with a spare in the first. Peter threw a 614 to qualify for today's show. It's on the head pin again, gets a six drop, leaves the two, four, seven, and eight. Piece of wood leaning against the I'm at an angle. Uh, the <laughs> oh, the four pin. Got robbed on that he one. He did get robbed. He buried that right in the pocket where it looked like it should have gone. Probably that wood deflected the four pin away from the seven. Yeah, picks that up for a 10 box. <laughs> 26 after two. Good mixing action that time hey, for Chuck as he drop. drops nine and has the seven pin with some lumber on the deck. And that was another illustration of Mrs. Riley's duck soup as Chuck has his first mark of the match. Spare in the third. Bonus. The four horsemen right, one, three, six, and ten. Oh, nice bid. And the ten pin remains. When inside that time, we've talked about that before on, yeah. on our previous shows and put it down for the ten. Forty-four after four. Peter, our fourth seed today. The winner of this match will face our third seed, Dave Godwin. Light hit, and it's Rich's favorite leave. Oh, the left check mark. You're already one nickel in, and it's only seven boxes. Yes. A little light that time on the object, leaving the 4-7. Peter coming in with an average of 124. Very impressive statistics. A high single of 211. 
as he has a 10. Back-to-back 10s. -back a high triple of 498. High five of 771. And a high 10 of 1462. And will you look at that? That's exciting. <laughs> five, six, seven, ten. No wood to help. And that ball was buried right in the pocket, too. Tried to move the 6-10 over to take out the 5-7, and seven, but obviously that leave is very, very tough. And he almost made it. Nine box and has the early one pin lead. Yes. Nice ball. Right in the one two pocket. The pins just fly. Chuck with his second mark, the first strike of this match. Moves over to lane six. First bonus ball. I don't have we seen this before? My Two goodness. in a row. Lane six is vicious. Yeah, that it is, but he has a piece of wood out in front. Let's see what he'll do with it here. Oh, oh what a, a tremendous smart. Very well played that time. Back to back marks here for the original Chuck D. And Peter Pereira is back up. Brooklyn and nearly a strike. The three pin remains. That was a great ball. It came in there nice and smooth. All over it. Matches the strike that Chuck puts up. Let's see what he gets for this fill here. Off the head pin that time, fills his spare with five. Leaves the four horsemen right and the seven pin. He settles in with an eight box and is 68 after six. Chuck is back up looking to fill his spare in the sixth. As he has the early lead in our first round matchup. Rich Lamoni, I'm Kyle Bruce. We're del delighted to have you with us here. Chuck got a break that time. Yeah, that could have been a lot worse. That looked like it was going to be a half Worcester to start, and then you open your eyes up and say, wow, I'm just looking at the 1-9. No. Let's score that at 10. 92 after seven. A big hit again. And should have a pretty good shot at this single here. He shouldn't be affected by the cap on the left of the pin. I was wrong. That's all right. You're still our expert analysis, and I have full confidence <laughs> in every every piece of wood that that you call here on our show. And he settles in with a nine box, 101 after eight. Well, for our audience at home, I wasn't, you know, he doesn't throw a straight, straight ball. So he has rotation and I was figuring it would be a splash. Any part of it that he hits, it should have gone. 
with a solid six pin remaining for our, our fourth seed, Peter Pereira. A clear shot at it. Yes. Right in the face. You have to make sure you don't ever give Pete any sort of room on the lane. You have to stay on top of him or all of a sudden you're down 25 pins with two boxes to go. Look at that. Parallel pins. The f five and six. That's correct. Well, he managed to carry the seven and ten this time. This is true, yes. Let's see how he negotiates this one. Ooh, he tried to cut it over. So at 10 box, 96, Chuck's lead is five. Another spare lead, this is the 2-4. Chucky's throwing a great ball right now. He's been all over the head pin. Yes. There have been some interesting leaves on lane six so far. Leaves the four, six, and seven with a piece of wood in front of the six. <laughs> Chucky finishes with a nine box on lane six and a one twenty seven for the string. That's a that's a good start. It's a good start. Absolutely. Chuck Avich is 115, so. A little frustration that time as that's the third time we've seen this leave by both of our bowlers, and that's the second time that Peter has seen it. have to pray for a lucky bounce somewhere on that leaf. And an eight box will put him at. One oh four. the head pin again. He leaves just the five. Yes. All over it. 114 plus a ball. Strike here will put him right at his league average at 124. This must be a record. I was going to say, or we could just hit the head pin and leave the four, five, seven, ten. That must I didn't be want to jinx him in. My goodness. Wow. Well, that'll conclude our first string here on Classic Candle Pins. Chuck DeRocher has a seven pin lead, 127 to 120. And we'll be back with our second string right after this timeout. And then from this angle, it all makes a star. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. show up. And frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy. And giving up, impossible. And then we're going to turn the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. Finally, what? What's your reaction? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
and unconventional methods uh, okay, what else? common. This is their world. I'm a teacher. I make more. Peter Pereira will start our second string of this first round matchup on Classic Candle Pins. He comes in trailing by seven. And he punches out the three pin to get us going here. That, the two pin and the, and the three pin amaze me to no end. How you can just plunk one. Well, he almost made the conversion there, leaving the six pin. It's just, just a testament to how good of a bowler he is. Oh, he starts it off with a ten. Bomb. That was a quick, quick strike. No doubt about that one for sure. <laughs> Nearly the response from our fifth seed. Spare in the first. Big nine. Chuck lives in Methuen. He's 27. Does his. He works in Bradford at the bowling center there as he settles in with a 9 and a 28 after 2. One of the things that you have to really try to do when you're out on the lanes is to keep your emotion out of it and keep throwing the same ball that you like to throw. As we just witnessed on lane 6. Chuck threw a great first ball like he had been throwing the whole time. And then it looked like he took something off it to try to make the nine drop. It looked like a different ball. Four, eight, ooh, nine and ten. Fills a spare with eight. Finishes with a nine box. A side note on that leave that Peaches had. A few weeks ago, we were facing the team in East Boston, and our anchor, Brian Fornia, he hit that clean, no wood, 4, 8, 9, 10, and proceeded to fill it with two. He hit the 1-5. Oof. Isn't that awesome? You make a great shot, and then you just have a horrendous fill on it. It's, it's not good. Deserves 10, gets two. Pete had the cluster five on the left and the ten pin. He hit the front, managed to leave the five and the eight. It's a very good conversion bid. Finishes with a ten box. Yeah, ten box. Chuck is looking at four horsemen left right now. No wood to help. Just sliding by the head pin that time. And the 10 box pull put him at 38, 38 after three. Chuck part of a 2011 World Championship team and 
as we record this. The World Championships will start next week, an event in which you'll be taking place. You'll I will be there. Be there. I, the first year I'll be captaining my own team. I'm sure that's going to be a learning experience. I already told them, you know, I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm sure I'm going to make a mistake somewhere, you know. But I want them to feel as though I'm approachable, and if they don't like something, I want them to tell me. You know, it's going to take all, all eight of us to win, not me, not my decisions. It's our team, and I want to see us succeed. Well, I want to see us succeed, that's for sure. Uh, after four boxes in our second string with this first man ratch up, Chuck DeRocher and Pete Pereira tied at 47. We'll step away and we'll be right back after this timeout. <laughs> Peter Pereira is back up on lane six, excuse me, lane seven. Our second string here, first round matchup. Tra trailing by seven. Light hit has the triangle in the corner, 478 with the 10. He surveys the lead and let's see how he does. Played the cap. I think that's the way you had to go. Tried to get everything moving from left to right, but I'm surprised he didn't carry all three on the left. Score that a nine. I'll have a 56 half here. Four horsemen right plus the eight pin. You got it. Peter, not only a veteran of the candle pin scene, but he's also a veteran of the United States Navy was in for 14 years and with Veterans Day being next Tuesday as we tape this, I uh, want to take a moment to thank him for his service and we'll, I'll certainly do that once we have the stand up later in the match. So that's an eight box and 64 after six. Chuck Rich. Buries it in the pocket, six, seven, and nine. He's got two pieces of wood against the seven pin. If he can get those two pins on the right move, and he might be able to deflect one of them into the... Oh, yes! Oh, he didn't even need A it! tremendous shot! Seven plus a ball, and that was a that deserves ten on this one as he moves over to lane six. Here's the bonus. Nearly a strike. De deserves ten, gets nine. That was a great ball. Not this time, but. Lead will be in double digits anyway as he's 76. Lead is 12 right now overall. Right through the heart that time. What you gotta do when you have the eagle, one side then the other. Grabs two out of the three on one side and two out of the three on the other side. Leaves the two and three for an eight box. He's gonna move over to lane six now. And once again, my math was not correct, so we'll, we'll show the proper scoring. Is. We have eight boxes completed here as Peter's looking at 
two, five, and seven. Nice yes. shot. That's a way to sit down in the eighth box. Spare in the eighth. Is off the head pin that time, but he got a got a break there. He's looking at one, two, and eight. Obviously, the problem pin will be the eight in the back, but he has some wood to help. Bounce that one a bit at the line. a pin and count, but he's off to say Peter's spare here in the eighth. He's able to carry the back pin. He almost had the opposite leave from the box previous. Leaves the one and three, and the nine was the last one to tip. Right on it. That's Chuck's sixth spare on the day and his seventh mark overall. Big bomb there that time by Peter Pereira. Cannot break up the split that time, but again, he's right on the head pin. If my math is right, he's 15 out of 20 on the head pin. Oh, he's all over it. Excellent bid on the spare opportunity. And we have the illustrious Francis W. Stanwood going down to clear a piece of wood that time. <laughs> Comes out of it with a 10 and a 121. So it puts him at 241. After two. Chucky's opposite a strike fill here. He's off the head pin. He's got a four fill out of it. That puts him 99 after box is completed. What's that? Seven, uh, eight boxes, excuse me. It's going to gain some ground here in this box. Uh, it puts him at 107. One, two, four. And a ten pin. And the ten. Ten remains. So Chuck will be open these last two. And he concludes it with an eight box and a one fifteen. If my math is correct, we're looking at a one-pin match going in our final string here on the first round. Classic candle pins, Chuck DeRocher, 242, Peter Pereira, 241. And we'll be back with our third and final string right after this timeout.
I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family. The first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us. Invest in us. Watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Welcome back to Classic Hamilton's in downtown Amesburg, along with Rich Lamoni and Kyle Bruce, and we have a one-pin match here. The leader is the man on lane seven right now. His name is Chuck DeRocher. Takes out the three, six, and ten with his first ball. He's got to get on that head stick. A little thin that time. Still has four pins standing. And it'll be an eight box to start off this third straight. As he moves over to lane six. Very similar to the leaf he just had on lane seven. Carried an extra pin this time. Again, the winner of this first round matchup has Dave Godwin next week. Dave, a great bowler in his own right, so we're going to have a tremendous second round matchup for you. Makes Chuck a very good nine these. out of that. Yes. Chuck was open these first two, 17 after two. You know, both of these bowlers have been all over the head pin and all over the object and haven't had much to look at sometimes, but it's made for a very good matchup here. Peter cannot break up the split. He has a piece of wood behind the three and six. He has the seven pin in the corner. Let's see what he can do with it. Wow. A great pick. The seven pin was non-committal and is still standing. Ten box. With a ten box, Pete takes the lead. He's up a pin now. Peter, the 2012 New Hampshire State All Events champion, and that's Scratch. And back in 1988, he was Class A Mass All Events champion. So, what were you doing in 1988? I was in nice grade school. Peter just converts the 7 9 like it was nothing. Spare him a second. It's Pete's ninth mark so far today. I was what, 10th, third grade? Yeah, I was third grade. Yes. Fourth grade, something like that. That's all right. Chuck let that go a little too early and starts off our third string. Open the first threes. He has an eight box. 25 after three. Still He's over to lane six. Ooh. 
might have a little bit of a timing issue as this match progresses here. Nice bid right there on that leave. Ended up leaving just the seven pin. Right in the Ten face. Bucks. 35 after four. Pete's gonna add to his lead right here. It is currently at two pins. And whatever this fill, he's gonna add big, to it. Big bonus ball. And he has the 9-10. And Pete, yet again, adventures in head pin. Leaves the 9 and 10, no wood. And that's gonna be an eight boxes. Pete went into the channel that time, made the call right away. Peter will also be competing in our, or in the uh, World's Championships next week. This time that eight pin drop looks a lot better. Nothing wrong with the 6-10. Sizes it up. And slid by the six pin. More importantly, he has added to his lead. And a 10 box. So we're gonna step aside here in our third string after four boxes completed. It's Peter Pereira 46 and Chuck DeRocher 35. A 10 pin lead for Peter Pereira. We'll be right back with the conclusion of our first round matchup right after this. <laughs> Chuck DeRocher is back on lane seven, down by 10 in our first round matchup on classic candle pins. Buries it in the pocket and has the seven eight. That piece of wood is legal. I wouldn't call it good, but it is legal. If he can get it moving off the sidewall, he might be able to take out the seven and the eight together. And certainly put it right where he wanted to on that first ball. He's going far right that time to see if he could get it to move over. Would you move, uh, use that left piece? Maybe try to cap it or go high on it? The piece near the seven? I would have right. played the piece on the, near the seven, but right. that would have been my spot. Nine box and a 44 half. It also depends on the alley you're in. The, the sidewalls at Riverwalk are very lively, so you you want to you want to make sure you play it. You know, if you can use them, use them. The one five. Other places where it's not as peaceful and bouncy, you want to uh, go somewhere else. Maybe play that wood on the right. And it also depends on what type of ball you throw as well. Chuck goes through the hole this time, so he's gonna need a big uh, third ball here to bail out. It's a tough one that time. So he's 46 after six. Peter Pereira is up by 10 and has two open boxes to work with. And breaks up the split. 4-7. In a, in a match like this, dealing with someone like Peter Pereira is so difficult. He's one of the calmest bowlers on the lane in the fact that his opponents don't affect him. He's only affected by himself. And that's something that you really need in a head-to-head -head match like this. Where it's the name it appears, of the game, right? Yeah. Two against you. You know, where it appears that Pete's bowling well, and now Chuck is feeling the pressure. And it seems as though he's struggling a bit in this string. So a 10 box puts Pete at 56.
gains a pin and count there. It's up 11 after 5 in this string. Ooh. Nearly, well, converted the full horseman, but that, that 8 pin, so tough. 10 box, and he gains 8 pins and count in that box alone, which puts him at 19 with 4 boxes to go. Chuck needs a couple marks here. Four horsemen left plus the 10. Piece of wood next to the head pin, perpendicular to the pit. Well, he capped it, but couldn't carry the 10. Into the channel that time, so we're going to score that one a nine. 55 now. So, off the head pin there, it gets really f favorable leave in the sense that it was an eight drop, but he did leave the eight and nine. He's got a piece of wood there. I think if he plays it high, he's got a shot, hoping that the ball takes out the nine pin. He went yes. low on it and proved me wrong. Chuck desperately needed that mark that time, and he puts up a spare in the eighth. Peter Pereira, lane seven, box seven, string three of our first round. And he's through the middle. Peter does a fair amount of 10 pin bowling as well. And has a 196 10 pin average, so. Is, that, is be, that good? What's that? Is that good? I don't know. Imagine if you average 196 in candle pin. 10 box. That would be, that would be impressive. I know it, yes. Picks up another pin and count, he's up 20. Moves over to lane six. We'd have ESPN here if that were to happen. Light hit, but has the triangle to negotiate. Looks like the three, five, and six. He converts this. It's going to put a ton of pressure on Chucky yeah. to yeah. mark out. We'll be looking at a double strike situation, and he slides by the three pin that time. So the door is ajar for Chuck as he'll be filling that spare in the eighth. Another 10. Pete's doing exactly what you need to do in this situation. Don't leave any pins standing so that if your opponent gets something like a nine box, you're still picking up pins every box, which he's doing. How good would a bomb right here look for Chuck right now? That would cut the lead in half, that's for sure. And there's a punch out. Oh. Almost converts the half whistle, leaves the five pin. It's quite a bid. Ten puts him at 77. Again, in boxes completed, the lead is 18. And it's on the head pin again, but he has a split. Seven pins left, shooting for a 10. And he went into the channel that time, and he closes out with a nine and an 86. And finishes up with a 328. And Peter Pereira will be moving on to face Dave Godwin in our second round matchup. Has the 10 pin all alone. And puts it down. Pete 
He's so good at hitting singles. He's three for three today. It's a it's a huge difference when you can make those over and over and over again. A light hit that time. Fills his spare with eight. Got a lot of movement. He's got the three in the ten pin with a pile of wood in front of the ten. Hits the front pin, should go, and it does. Just like that. One fourteen plus a ball. Well, that was a quite a quite a leave off of that. He hit the three pin, got a nine drop out of it, finishes with a one twenty three. And a three so string total. Oh, sorry about that. No, three sixty four. Yes, that's a good day. So Peter Pereira moves on to face Dave Godwin next week for our second round matchup. We'll talk to our bowlers right after this timeout. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. We're back here in downtown Amesbury, Massachusetts on Classic Candlepins. Our first round matchup is completed, and we're here with our fifth seed, Chuck DeRocher. And Chuck, I thought you threw a great ball coming into the third string um, with that lead and uh, all over the head pin, all over the object, and I thought you got some uh, some splits today that were very tough, but uh, all in all, I thought you did pretty well. Yeah, I lost a head pin the last string and wasn't making shots. Seems like there were, you were trying to make the adjustment, like you were holding on to the ball a little bit, and uh, but I felt like you still got a good mix coming off the head pin a couple of times. Yeah, I just like I said, I wasn't making my shots, and there was a difference. Well, I'm glad that you uh, came on our show here today, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was our fifth seed, Chuck DeRocher, and we have uh, Peter Pereira coming up, winner of our first round matchup. And um, I'm not sure if you set a record today with five, six, seven, ten, because uh, I think we sh we saw that leave. Uh, well, four times. Yeah, four times, and three of them were from you. And uh, uh, we, you know, just talking with Chuck here about it, uh, I thought you guys were all over the head pin and got some strange things to look at. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the pins were a little tight down there, but, you know, I was on my object pins the whole day, so I felt pretty comfortable. Uh, Chuck pulled good, so, I mean, it was a good match. Is it similar to what you've seen uh, in Natick in years past uh, and in Wyndham? Uh, it's a little tougher here, but, again, you know, as long as you're hitting the head pin, hitting your object pins in your second ball, you're going to score, so it, it's, it's an honest house. What kind of advice can you give to bowlers that are trying to make it to a TV show like this? How, how do you deal with something like that? Um, really, it's just doing the same thing you always do. You know, as long as you're hitting your object pins, uh, your scores are going to come. So that's the biggest uh, thing I see with juniors coming up is they try and throw too hard, and they lose track of their object pins. And, and, and you know, it's hard to score when you're not hitting what you're aiming at. Well, as we tape this broadcast, uh, next Tuesday is Veterans Day, and as I had mentioned uh, in the broadcast, uh, Peter was in the United States Navy for 14 years. So. I want to thank you for your service to our country, and we look forward to seeing you uh, next week. Our, our second round matchup will uh, have Peter Pereira against our third seed, Dave Godwin. For our entire crew in Rich Lamoni, my name is Kyle Bruce. We'll see you next time on Classic Candlepins. So welcome back to the Classic Candlepins Control Center. Our first round uh, matchup is complete with Peter Pereira moving on to uh, face Dave Godwin in our second round as he defeats Chuck DeRocher, uh, 364 to 328. Uh, Mark, this was a close match, a one-pin match uh, going into the third string, 242-241. Uh, yeah. And this was, uh, it seemed like Peter was consistent the entire match and uh, Chuck may have uh, run out of gas a little bit. Yeah, I think that's just kind of what happened at the end there. I mean, one string, one pin, I'm sorry, excuse me, after two strings is, the only way you can ask for to have a, like a fantastic match on television when you're virtually tied after two and Peter just 
if I remember correctly on the score sheet, he did not leave a pin standing in the third game. And if you want to win matches on TV or just in matches in general, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> By leaving nothing standing and getting your fills, even though Peter, I think, only had three marks that last game. Correct. He had three very good fills and got away with the match. Um, Chucky did, I think, run out of gas in that third game. That two box hurt a lot. He had the spare on the bottom, but then he only got two in that one. But um, it was all right. It was a good show in farm. That last ring is not a testament to how Chuck bowls whatsoever. So he just had a tough game, and I'm sure we're going to see him again in the future sometime. I'm sure we will, too. Uh, our second round matchup, as I had indicated, uh, will be Peter again moving up one rung on the ladder to face Dave Godwin, our third seed, who had a 618 roll-off score. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what we should expect from Dave in our second round matchup. Dave Godwin is a good buddy of mine. Um, he's, another, he's a fireballer, a young kid. But um, he is already more accomplished in his young life than many career lifelong bowlers have been. Um, I've had the privilege to bowl with him at the Worlds. I watched him set a house record at the World Championship Tournament. We were in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and the man threw a 221 in one string at the World Championships. So that's pretty much all you have to say about a boy like that. He has several TV appearances when he was a, when he was a youth and several state titles to his credit, um, several just, cha I could sit here all day and list his accomplishments, but I don't have to. Uh, next week, you're in for a treat. He is one heck of a bowler, and he's going to give Peter a run for his money. Well, I look forward to it, and uh, I'm sure that you will, too. Our second-round matchup next week, Dave Godwin will face Peter Pereira in our second-round matchup. For our entire crew and Mark Ritchie, my name is Kyle Bruce. We'll see you next time on Classic Canada.